Okay. So I am Gina Brown. This is Miss Kimmy over here with us. And we're here to talk Mara Murray tonight. Um, we also, um, as you can see below, have Mara Murray case discussion, a safe space over on Facebook. If you want to get the link and come join us on the group, let us know. Kim will get that in the description for you. We are going to discuss the, the night of February 9th and the actual search that did or did not happen initially after the accident because some people have questions on that. So we're going to, we're going to dig in some and just do some general discussion on it. For anybody who doesn't know the case, this is kind of a really good place to jump in. So if you haven't checked out her videos already, put down, kind of running you through the case, jump on this, get caught up. And then we're going to add some really cool, like side notes to get you caught up a little faster over the next few months, few weeks in the future. Okay. So Kim. Oh, there's our girl, Gypsy. Hey, Gypsy. Yeah. She's our one watcher. So. Well, Gypsy is rocking it tonight. So. Hey. Um. Because I'm old and I'm up and it's late. And stop it. <laughs> it's not that late. I know. I know. Yeah. So, so tell us about what do you think about the initial search? So Maura, if you haven't been caught up so far, Maura was from um, math. She was a student at UMass. She takes off. She drives up to New Hampshire to the White Mountains and... Cops up there get a call, Woodsville, they get a call, hey, there's an accident, the officer gets there, there's nobody at the car, just the car. So now you've got a car, no person, and go ahead, Kim, what do you think happened, I mean, well, did they search for the person driving the car? I can't get into that right now, we're focusing on the initial search that's what i'm yeah. saying but yeah that oh somebody asking you a question and i don't see it or are you guys talking to me hello i love this case always have gypsy <laughs> um so currently i am trying to put out a part five for it's kind of like a recap trying to get something else out there because it's really stagnant within the community and everything. So that's the purpose behind the videos. And it kind of gets people talking again, like, hey, what about this and that and this person? So part five is basically picking up where part four left off, which is, I don't even remember now that I'm thinking of it. It ended with Jeff Williams, but it was basically following that night. The car was discovered and I'm picking up, you know, the next day. So Fred gets the call from, he gets a voicemail at three. He was out of town. So that was on his um, home answering machine in Hanson, Mass. He was working in Connecticut. So that's why he didn't get the call. And then at five, Kathleen Moore's oldest sister had called him instead and um said more is gone so he immediately called the haverhill police department and they basically just reiterated everything they said oh well if she doesn't turn up by the morning that's when we'll consider her missing but they considered her missing at like 5 12 p.m or something mm -hmm. um <laughs> mute that she's gonna throw it out the window guys <laughs> There's skunks, just kidding. Um, so he arrives at dawn the next day, eight o'clock. They start with the search dogs. Um, Hundred yards. They were yeah. What day? But what day was this with the search dogs? This was Wednesday, February tenth. So nope, February eleventh. But it wasn't because, because Fred got there on Tuesday, right? No, Tuesday. No, Wednesday. He got there Wednesday. Right. Going to join they the search weren't. party that wasn't there. And he right. wanted to know why they weren't searching for his daughter. Right. So. Well, first, they treated it like a. Yep. 
they claim after the fact that, well, they were just arriving to the scene of an abandoned car and it looked like the person had been drinking because we went in the car and rifled through their shit without a warrant, but <laughs> we can just go down every sort of, um, <laughs> oh my God. There's rabbit holes on every hour of this case since February 2009, even before. I wouldn't even call them rabbit holes. I would call them hill holes. Swiss cheese holes. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, Rats around every corner. It's it's hard for people with ADHD to. Oh, Desiree's coming. So, oh. where was I? The so Wednesday. Yes, sir, Fred is bullshit. He gets there and he starts putting the fire under everybody's ass and they bust out the scent dog, which that was bullshit too, because they gave the scent dog a pair of brand new leather gloves that Fred said she probably never wore. Um, the dog handler told Fred that day when the search was over that um, the scent probably wasn't reliable because it was too weak. So it was only about a hundred yards down the road from where her car was discovered, which landed right outside of Butch Atwood's house, who is the school bus driver. Yep. And what did Butch Atwood do the night of the accident? What did who? Butch Atwood. Talking about people going and searching. How odd. Oh, well, I mean, if... If he had if anything to do with more, car. you know what I thought of today is if he did have anything to do with more and say like he drove around French Pond Road and shit with her in the bus or whatever, you know, the dogs would have followed down French Pond Road. Right. I don't think he had anything to do with it. I just no, think it's odd it. for them to make the comment that uh, it was it was nothing but an abandoned car because they think someone's been drinking and they have an accident and they leave so they don't get a DUI. And so that's all it is. And they usually show back up the next day because it happened. Right? Mm hmm But yet they're sending out the that word to go look for her in his private vehicle. And Monaghan, State, State Highway Patrol, right. he's stopping and asking a couple people on his way leaving the accident that he showed up at. So... That was your search party until Fred got there and lit the fire. Yeah, right? it was a, that was, I mean, they had one scent dog. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, that just. And they stand them. by that. They stand by that scent stop there. So whatever happened to Mara, they stand by. It happened there where the dog stopped at Bradley Hill Road, right? In front um, of the Chetwood. Well, I go by what Fred Believe. Yeah, I do too. I'm just and trying I mean, to give a whole full view of uh, the different many faces of this. <laughs> so then they have the ground searches. Then Billy shows up eventually with his mom and dad, Maura's uh, boyfriend mm -hmm. at the time. And I'm not positive on the time, but at some point that day, <gasps> Herbie Herb's here. Hi, girl. My live stream with four people. I'm so excited. I thought we were only going to have like one. <laughs> um, so the creepiest thing that I haven't even got to in part five yet, and I'm in a weird way excited, is that phone call that Billy got on his voicemail. He was boarding a plane because he was in Fort Sill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many forts. Um, <laughs> Fort Sill. <laughs> and yeah. he was going through security. He had to have his phone off. So he got a voicemail. He checked it later when he got to Mass. And it was described as whimpering. Someone making like whimpering, crying noises. And he was like, sure as shit that it was Mora. And when his mom talks about it on Disappeared, um, the television program from a while ago, she um, 
like the look on her face, like she's like, he, we really think it's her. And then it kind of changed over the past 15 years to, oh, well, well, wait, they called, he tried to figure out where the call came from. He called the number back and it was a prepaid calling card, mm-hmm. which and Maura, then mm-hmm. Maura used a lot because this is back in 2004 and I, I think I had my first cell phone back then. A little bit. I had one about this big. Mm. It was a bag phone. <laughs> no, I don't remember. No, 2004, no, I didn't have a bag phone then. I think they had a Nokia, but. I may have had a Blackberry. I don't remember. Yeah, so what was I saying? About the Red Cross calling card. Yes, so Mora had received a bunch of prepaid calling cards. She had just got a cell phone or just got put on Billy's plan. Mm -hmm. So she had a bunch left over. Billy's mom, Sharon Rausch, said that um, she had just recently given her some, I think for Thanksgiving. Was that Thanksgiving or Christmas? Yeah. Well, maybe Christmas too. And that's where she got the gloves. Because back then it wasn't the same. You didn't have unlimited calling. So if anybody, if, if you don't remember well, just remember, if you picked up the phone and you dialed, even from a landline, those used to be connected to a wall. You had to plug those <laughs> in the wall. It was long distance. If it was outside your local area, even a town over, it was long distance and cost money. So cell phones were expensive anyway. Right. And roaming. So that's why the calling cards were a big deal, especially him living in Fort Sill. And then her being at UMass and then his parents, who she was really close to living in um, Ohio. Mm. But yeah, so she had all these calling cards and it showed up as a calling card. Right. And then when they, you know, I forget when they traced it, they were trying to tell them that it came from the Red Cross, but. And the reason the Red Cross would be calling him supposedly. Is because he works in the military, but. Get leave. Why the hell would the Red Cross need to use a prepaid calling card to Mm -hmm. call somebody. They all work at desks with landline phones. Mm -hmm. And his mother had said that she she arranged that. Red Cross helps them get leave when they need emergency leave. And with her missing, um, she never even gave them Billy's number. So she was having communication with her numbers. And so the the Red Cross came from Troop F of the... um, State police there in New Hampshire, hmm. and actually Todd Landry, um, who says it was the Red Cross. But well, there again, <laughs> in my opinion, yeah, and then uh, that's the thing is there's like two sides to every every rock, right? Actually, there's like four sides to every rock. So mm-hmm. there's there's facts. And then there's facts that I don't believe are facts. I believe they're leading statements. <laughs> so, yep. Anyway. Yep, so a lot of people are talking about well, the facts, the facts, the facts. Well, it depends on what side of the case you look at. I mean, and and, and I you can't tell me that police are in on this, and you can't tell me police aren't in on this, because it could go either way right now. I mean, it just could. There's no facts telling me they're not, and there's no facts telling me they are. And either way, I can make a case either way right now. So I'm leaning at 90% myself, but that's just me. That they're involved. There's some involvement. Well, well, it could be. It could be one person or. Yeah. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. someone screwed up and then. And they're it's trying to of like, oh, well, I'll cover for you, black mm-hmm. male, kind of. Yep, or covering sloppy police work, one yep. of the two. Looking at liability issues back then, because um, a lot of a lot of the things back then that was a lot different than it is now. Um, a lot easier to get sued as a city or whatever back then than it is now. Now they can pretty much screw you, and you know. Hey. They're not liable. Right. So those things come up. All right, let me ask you this, Kim. So the initial search is really there wasn't a search. 
other than a private citizen that goes out in his personal vehicle, which was the bus driver, if anybody's watched, or, or you know the case, you know exactly what we're talking about. If you don't, this was the bus driver um, that pulls up, and he's the only one who saw Mara that night, um, or who he, we believe to have been Mara that night. Um, or the police believe that it was Mara that night. I don't know. Um, so he takes off, and then we have... Um, Probably some of what some of the emergency vehicles that were there in a very guy. short time, maybe working. He's one what? of them. Dick Guy, the EMS driver. He was in the oxygen program. Right. Yep. Is he looking on the way back out? Because, I mean, what I understand that. They got there and they were only on scene for six minutes. And he said that it was weird that they only had them there. And then Cecil, you know, said, oh, no, you guys can go back. We don't need you. And right. he thought it was weird. He's like, don't you want us to stick around just in case the driver is, like, injured or something? But the call logs actually show different. They show that, um, if not anybody, but at least the fire are there a lot longer. But there, again, they show something different than statements made directly from the police anyway. So. Mm -hmm. Everything's different. So, so we've got um, we've got a private citizen, which which does make sense to me. It, it this place is so royal. Um, I said it right. Royal. I can't even say it. Royal. Royal. It's royal. Yeah, I'm gonna start singing now. <laughs> um, being out like that, I can see that when it, back then, you know. Hey, yeah, go right around the roads, and if you if you see her, let us know. I can see that happening there. I mean, we're not in New York City. We're yeah. not in a big town. Um, I can see that. So that's our search party. We have a highway patrol or trooper or whatever they're called up there. Um, Monahan has checked on the scene. He hears it on the scanner. He goes to the scene. Um, He's leaving back out after he talks to Cecil, the officer, and he stops and asks a few people had they seen the girl. Mm -hmm. And then we have maybe fire stopping and asking on the way out. And then after that, um, there's really no search party until Fred gets there, lights the fire, they get a dog out. Fred was the search party basically when he got there. He couldn't believe. That's one thing with Fred is like, you know, I get there, and I guess as a parent in your mind, you're thinking, my child's missing, and they're doing everything. I've got to get there because I need to help them. I need to find my child. I think you he get, was pissed, too, when he first, you know. Yeah, hey, you get there, and nobody's looking for your child. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and then. Why didn't they go east is the immediate question that he asked. Right, right. Why didn't they go east? East goes into an area of more desolate um, roadway where there are no vehicles. So supposedly their thought is that she's going to go back the way that they assumed she came from, which was to the west, um, which is where there is a very small country store back that way. Um, so they're assuming a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and did not go west. But now, wait, they asked people who were coming from the west. There were people coming from the west, which were not any emergency, not any government, not anybody like that. Mm -hmm. they're, they're coming from the west. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, from the east. And these are personal um, or private citizens who later tell us they see nothing. But the police didn't know that. So why did not the police or or the highway patrol, that is their jurisdiction. Why would you not go back through your, your jurisdiction and look and see what if, what if? And did anybody ever turn and just ride up Bradley Hill and see if you went up Bradley Hill? So, um, yeah, that's that's just the question. And so those are the questions Fred asked. Jimmy said she should have been taken. She I think she meant to say could have been taken, sold, harvested, trafficked. Holy yep. crap, that's a border state. Well, it's not. It's not right on the border. It's not it, far. It's very close to Vermont. And yeah, that it is. Yeah. It's, the part 
of the road that her car was found, what is it, the hundred yards that the dog stopped is actually like the the line. So that's why where you're going into um sure. where you're getting into mm -hmm. county versus city. So you know, um and I, I, I found a lot through these cases is that it, it's not the same in every state, every town. So, like, I'm in a city, but we don't have a police department. We have the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office is responsible for the county. They can help when you have a city and a county. They can help with the city, that the city rules the city. I'm not in a city. I'm in county. Mm. Um, I'm in a city. But we don't have a police department because we were annexed later. But we don't have a police department, so we still depend on our sheriff's department. So our sheriff's department in in the county I'm in is a lot like Grafton County, where she was. So Grafton County is huge, and so it's a lot of territory. Well, then you go into Haverhill, Bath, Woodsville, all of that. You've got Haverhill Police Department who's covering, and these are just like little sub. I'm a, what would you call them? What would you call Bath and Woodsville, et cetera? Behavioral, just like little. They have names. They even really have addresses, but we always called them like the dot, the little dots around the little town. So you got a little town with little dots around the little town. Um, but Behavioral Police is covering so much of that. And then there's lines where the and I don't know how their sheriff's department does, or I know they they have the sheriff's department, but then you have state highway that they're responsible for certain portions of the highway in between, I guess, any gap between right. sheriff and city and city and city. And then you have Franconia, you have mm -hmm. um, where you go further out. So you got land of right there. Yeah. It, it, it's all jacked up, y'all. It's just all jacked up, but it's very oh, convenient. Um, Benton. Benton, yeah. 116. Yeah. So it's all backed up. So it's kind of like saying, hey, the perfect place to go missing, because I like to do this, is where you have Yeah, and so right now we're having a lot of districts. They're districts and they're all squares, okay? Well, let's just go somewhere right in here and act at some going the wrong way because I'm backwards. Um, we're going to be right here and we're going to not really be, we're going to be in no man's land and let them figure it out. Was there a reason? So there's a lot of speculation of, of did somebody do something tomorrow and put her car there? Or did they try to, well, basically that would be the reason that you would find a vehicle and it even matter what jurisdiction um, would be. It matters or it don't matter. The main thing is there were a lot of questions over a lot of things that night. Mm -hmm. So, it, yeah. So you got a lot of people that could have had, if it would have been, t what, 10 more feet, depending on at what position the car was in, depending on what witness came through, um, because the car was even seen in different positions throughout that night. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right. he's on the side of the town line. Yeah. I think on the 911, you know, the records or whatever it said, you know, according to Faith Westman, the other neighbor who made the initial call before Butch, she described it as, you know, there's a car facing westbound in the eastbound lane, mm -hmm. which it's basically facing. Like if you're driving on a road, there's a car that's I'll show you. that you're going to do a head on like nose to nose type of accident with. You want to do Gina's art class tonight? You're welcome to laugh with me, not at me. I love that. You should have drawn some. Well, yeah, I'm just going to do it quickly because I knew we were going to do it. Um, I do that a lot with a lot of my online training. So I figure why not? Kind of, but I can I can quickly draw this out for you guys. If anybody doesn't know, if you know, look, you might get bored with our discussions, but I love you anyway. Hang out. We're just doing this to play around. In the and anybody that comes across the case and doesn't know the case, this is just a little more of a 
discussion. It's us having girl talk. All right. So, oh, oh gosh, I'm backwards. So this is going to be all messed up. All right. So you basically got the row kind of does like this. Okay. This is not the scale. Okay. So, and it goes actually kind of like this or whatever and then it's going to keep going this way okay remember when we say east this is east when you hear us say bradley hill road this is going to be bradley hill and then when you hear her talk about westman's westman's is actually kind of like here if you hear anything about old peter's road it's here Okay, Butch Atwood we discussed is kind of right there. Um, okay, so that's Atwood, that's Westman, Oh, Peters. So okay, you know all of this by heart. Yeah, it's sad. I could even tell you where the road signs are. I can tell you. I can tell you who lives this way, this way, back on one sixteen. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad when you you lived it for too long and studied it too. Long. But okay. So her car, when she's the way Westman right here, she says, this is Westman. That's the weathered barn. The, um, yeah, the weathered barn is actually right here. Well, just this is the Westman's house. Yes. So the barn is, it belongs to the Westman's. It's right across in this hairpin turn. Okay. They are, she's telling police when she makes the call that, remember, this is east. It's in the eastbound lane right okay but this is the front of the car it's facing the wrong way mm -hmm. so hopefully y'all can see that so it's in the eastbound lane facing the wrong way so when it when somebody's coming along of course your first fear is going to be they're going to hit her so bitch atwood says he told her to turn on your flashers it's dark out here and it is dark i mean you've got a patch of wood but it's not desolate. Desolate. It is not as much as I thought it would be. Okay, go ahead. No, That's my art class. Thank you. Thank you. I was just. Um, I can paint. I can't draw. Jack. I just commented <laughs> that your car had boobies on it. It does. It has boobs on it. I could make them bigger if I knew you was going to push on the boobs. But we're not going to do that. We're going to keep this a, a, a kitchen. So, Gypsy asked. Who said they saw someone smoking? So that was the weathered barn people, resident. the Westman. All right, so the Westman here, the way their house actually sits, it kind of sits where you kind of, it's got like this jut out on it, like an addition. It's an older house. It's really, it's a nice house. <laughs> it's a nice house, but it does have an addition. So they could actually look out, like, I think they were looking out the kitchen window, right? Mm -hmm. And they, the Westmans in this house are the ones who made the very first call. 727. Yeah. You have Faith and Tim, right? Faith and Tim Westman. Faith says, she reports it and says, sees a man smoking cigarette. They're okay, whatever. And then it gets changed. But was it changed due to... Cops telling them what they saw. The power of insinuation. Yeah. Um, now, I will say, a lot of people say it was the cell phone. Um, I've heard something, and it, it'll come out later, but I have, um, I know someone who has actually checked that out and said the phone that she had actually would have a light, and, and they'll talk about that. So, can you mistake in it? Um, I think that person's going to be doing some testing on that. They're like having somebody do the testing on actually taking a draw off the cigarette in the dark and then having one of those phones yeah. like then to see if you could get in, in any way, if I could be mistaken. So. Well, my question is how, you know, it's dark. How would you automatically, you could just say there's a person. Right, right. How do you know it's a man? She said it was a man, and I mean, did you see a little? It was winter, so if the window down, did you see a little cloud of smoke come out, or is it just a red dot? 
a glow, I think is what John Smith said. Yeah. Well, tell me how you know it's a man. Right. Unless people are getting in and out and the interior lights come on and you see a man. If that's the case. Um, she wasn't but, watching the whole time. I, I, I think, I don't think it, who cares if it's a cigarette or not a cigarette, where'd the man come from? I mean, that that's the question. Um, but there's also another question that we need to discuss because right. the bolo gets put out. Let's bounce back to yep. the day of the search. Well, the I play it on Tuesday. Wednesday. Oh, I was talking about the bolo, the first bolo that went out before they even got in touch with Fred. Oh, shit. Yeah, we can talk about that. So that yeah. was how many minutes? That was like 11 minutes in or shorter that Cecil Smith, the responding officer. Um, All right, so let's put this in perspective for you guys real quick before Kim goes on. The car, remember, she, Mars in college, she has the vehicle. The vehicle's in dad's name. Okay, that's that's common. It's in dad's name. So she's up there. It, we know Butch says he's seen a female. Okay, that's what we know. Um, nobody said, what's your name? He never, if he did, he didn't say anything. What's your name? Um, so now we're going to talk about the bolo that came out to actually be the right height, right? Exactly her height. Exactly her height. Um, and that it was a female and that her name was Mar Marie. Um, they have not talked to her her name. The first bolo, he didn't know her name. He, he didn't know her name there. But they printed it out still, I think, when they sent it out. That first but, one? I know that they did it for the second one. That was the second one. But that was on Tuesday. Too. That was on Tuesday. I think the first bolo went out on, on Monday night. Yeah. But and then the second one on Tuesday. It was more a Murray. They just said it was a female, 5'7". Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. So tell me. Tell me how from pulling the VIN number, the tag number, or whatever. A lot of people said insurance, and we'll tell you now, no. No, no, no. 25 plus years here, and I can tell you right now. She wasn't even not, on. She wasn't even she on, wasn't on the insurance, insurance. right. Right. Exactly. She wasn't on the insurance. And and then they said, okay, Fred Murray. Guess what? He's got three daughters. So how do we know the exact type? How'd they pick which one it was? Hmm. That that's just I don't know I don't think it's right because I mean Butch said the wrong height um he was off on the height of the person he seen and then a lot of people say well he probably didn't even see Mari saw somebody else but I mean that's where you're running off on rabbit holes and yeah we can go there but really I mean it's like it doesn't even matter how did they know hmm. well, whether it was more or not how do they know what Mari's height was. The only, the only thing that makes sense in my head is Butch had nothing to do with the information put in the bolo and Cecil went into her car and found her ID maybe and used that for the bolo because that's the easiest um, explanation and that would explain why. When did he get the warrant to do that? The next day or later. Um, yeah, it was later. Um, but, so that's another thing. Um, there was actually witnesses that went by that saw see. the officer inside the car. And they had said they did not go into the car. But you're right. That's exactly from her items and belongings that were left in the car. And you could probably found something in there with the information. Um, so that was Susan Champy, witness C, and she left Loon at, what time? Doesn't matter. It, 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 well, it doesn't really matter. Um, I, know, matter. I know Scott and Aaron's dealt with that because I mean, it's like, she thinks that she actually left later that night than what she normally would because um, the person that was taken over her shift had not shown up. Um, but I think they have kind of went back now to it, it's possible that maybe what she's thinking that could have happened a separate night. Maybe she was thinking it was different, um, but it doesn't matter. 
Well, you don't see that scene twice. You don't see uh, right. If, if you're going and you're saying, um, yeah, they were in the car. However, it doesn't matter. Regardless, mm. they were in the car that night or the very next morning. Even if you could disprove anything Champy said, and I don't believe really you can, they were in the car because that's almost the only way right. they could unless, identify that Moore was the driver of that vehicle. Unless they had pulled her over previously, right? Or right. her, or that seven oh five scanner call. Up yeah, we have scanner call, and then it's all you know. Like I was telling you earlier, I've been talking about somebody kind of has come back, and I don't know. And this isn't to open up more rabbit holes, right? At this point, this is just online chatter. Um, but somebody has come back and said that they believe that a fatality was mentioned at one point with the seven oh five call. So then a lot of people are saying, "Okay, well, wait a minute." Was there an accident with Mara at 705? And it's not on the call log. So when they put out the call logs, I mean, there's so much missing. Um, it's not on the call logs. And according to them, it didn't happen. But there were locals who heard it over the scanner call. So if that's the case, and it's always been a speculation, did something happen to her? Did an officer have something to do? Or they come on something up from 705 and... Her car was being towed or being hauled or whatever, and it was accidentally unhooked at that location or intentionally put at that location. So, I mean, it's an odd place to put one, but then again, a lot of people would say, well, no, because it's right on the the jurisdiction lines. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's crazy. Ooh, wind. Get her done, wind. Um, so yeah, those are the, I think those are the, a lot of the questions and this is like the back discussion that we've seen, the, um, the big arguments and fights over, and this is just a very, very, very small portion. Um, so there again, when I say I have no theory, um, I really My don't. Changes all the time. You what? My theory changes all the time. Yeah. Really, yeah. Man. So, wait, I saw somebody say something. Um, yeah, she told Butch that she had called AAA because he offered when he was um, passing her, oh, are you okay? Do you want me to, you know, call for an ambulance or whatever? And she said, no, that's fine. You know, I called AAA, but he knew that she was full of shit because there's no service. Right. Yeah, but, 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 but. Now, let's, let's keep in mind from um, when I was there and I was right beside the tree and I got a phone call and I about dropped. Okay, this was last year, okay? Um, it was not 2004. Mm. Um, so I went back and looked at my records when I got back home and, because I mean, I'm like, my phone is ringing and, and the people with me are like, okay, answer it. And I'm like, no, no you don't understand. My phone is ringing. It, there's service coming through. It hit the um, uh, Wells River Tower, which is in Vermont. But you got to remember, Vermont is like what, not even two miles away, right, Kim? Whoa. I mean, if you just go, well, when you get to the end, run right back up um, and across the bridge. I mean, it's, it's right like there, yeah. Three miles. Um, it's not far. So. I doubt that Wales River Tower was there back then. So she probably didn't have service. But a lot of people said it was spotty. And do y'all remember back then? I'm going to use my mouse for this. Can you hear me now? And people climbing up on like on top of things. And you remember the movies? It's so funny. You see them out on a farm and they're climbing. What was it? Um, what is that movie? Oh, heck. I don't know. Anyway. You take the city girl to the country and you get her out there and she's like, oh my gosh, I can't get it. And she's like trying to climb up on hay bales out at the farm and trying That's to get Sandra service. Bullock. No, it wasn't that one, Sandra. No, I'm thinking of, um, oh, heck, I can't think of it. I'm not going to think of it right now because it's too late. I'll think of it tomorrow at this yeah, time. I'll think of it tomorrow. Me a message. But, so back then, that is how it was. I mean, that's what you thought. So, let me ask you a question and a lot of people I don't think have really thought about this. People say, oh, she wouldn't have went up Bradley Hill because it's uphill. 
it's uphill and it's really steep, but it's a very gradual decline. So it's not like this. It's like this. And it's mm -hmm. almost one of those hills that you climb that with your eyes, you don't. Yeah, you wouldn't want to ride a bike up it, but in a car. But really, your car is pulling. You just don't realize, you know, how you're changing there and you're pulling really hard. But more man, Mar could run that up and back and up and back the shape she was in. So what's the difference? You're going to go look for the highest point. Mm -hmm. So if she's trying to find a place to get sales service, and I believe she really was probably um, not a hundred percent, but let, let's say that age, I'm going to see what I can do to get sales service. So I'm going to try. I'm not going to run two miles that way and two miles that way. I'm going to stay right within the area, trying my best to get service. Hmm. She, I think that's why she was walking around her car. She was right. Her. And did she take off towards Bradley Hill? Let's say the scent dog did pick up some kind of scent. Right. Did she go and go up because she realized, and it's dark, and so I don't know. But even without moonlight, I do know out there that with snow on the ground, the snow will pick up any light. From any anywhere, start. It doesn't matter. Um, you ever went out in, at night in the snow, and it's amazing how well you can see. Mm -hmm. But you know, you live in more snow than I do. Yeah. So, if she knew that there was a hill there, back then your thought would be like, "Well, heck, if I can just go through there, if I'm gonna get service, that's probably where I'm gonna get it." I don't know. I mean, that's just a speculation. That's just if she did try like running or walking she would definitely continue going east because you that's think, her, yep see I, I i would have stayed right in there or you would also think she would turn around and go back to Swiftwater if yeah. she was actually coming that way because yeah, they were absolutely. open and she could have ran it i mean you know i look at it and i'm be like i'm not walking that far you know well, Somebody come her, get me. No, for her? But she didn't really go that way. Like, they probably are always. I don't think, no, she didn't go that way. But it makes you wonder why. Yeah. Or she went away that she didn't mean to go because somebody did get her. Right. Right. So, and this is just us talking in, like, casual talk, guys. So, bear with us. These are things we've discussed, like, 5,000 times and <laughs> every year now. So it's like, eh. um, yeah. There's always something new, though, that we think of. There is. It's like you sit and you think about it, and then you go to bed at night, and then you're like, ah, oh, crap. You grab in the phone or iPad, and you're like, I'm going to send that to the group chat. And <laughs> Before I forget. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's um, but good question. So just. Okay, so we're just in, we're not even really into the end of the week, that first week. We're really in the first three days that we've discussed tonight. How many questions are there in just those three days? I mean, we're not even talking about why she was there. Where right. was she going? We're not talking about did she wreck or she hit a tree, as they say, or did she hit a tree, but her car's back on the road. Or then we have other, there's so much other than that. We're just talking about a very narrow little piece here. So just how many questions are right there? And then every three days after that, just keep adding that many different questions <laughs> for all the things that take place. So, yeah. I don't know. Do you think we get everything that we talked about talking about, that we talked about talking about to talk no. about? Yes, for part five, brainstorming. Anything else that you're thinking? I think I left it off with the Red Cross mysterious voicemail. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so let's talk about that real quick because it was something that I wanted to say. Imagine that, me having something ooh. to say. I never shut up, guys. Well, good because... I really don't. Yeah. Um, Sometimes when you talk, I use that time to think. You think. And yeah. Um, the thing about it is imagine, okay, if you 
Did you ever use calling cards, Kim? Did I use what? Calling cards. Um, I might have. I really don't think I did. Okay. I, I've used one at least once in my life. Probably when Do I was you remember how much time it took. To yeah. Make a phone call. Okay. Yeah. So here's the way I've thought of things. I'm thinking somebody's holding her cat up and she has her phone. Let's say they locked her up somewhere and and she's trying to get a hold of Billy. That's a heck of a lot of numbers to be punching up in that phone mm. when you're freaked out to make that call. However, why would she need to use the card? I don't know. I don't know at that point. Um, I really don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Or did she not even have her phone? The only way she knew to do it was that maybe they had a landline and maybe she had used the calling card so much she had the number memorized because a lot of people did back then. Mm. Believe it or not, people memorized calling card numbers. Oh, yeah. Um, it helps to be older than Kim. Um, she doesn't remember having a telephone that hooked in the wall. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know if you do or not. If what? Having a landline. With a phone, not a cordless oh phone, not a cordless. Did you ever have to dial like this on a phone? Rotary phone, yeah. yeah. Okay. I still have one in my room. I love that. Well, that's because you're retro chick. But okay, I'm being silly with him. Um, so Jerka, how? We talked about that one night, didn't we? Didn't we go through that call? That that whole phone and back in the day and. I think we did. Okay. Yep. I used to wear belts when I was younger that looked like the old telephone cords with jelly shoes. Yeah. Okay. Jelly <laughs> <laughs> like shoes. Yeah, they were pretty cool. I'm over it. Been there, done that. Sorry. Have fun with it. Um, sure. But yeah. okay, so the calling card. So what if what if she her phone's dead? Let's say her phone's dead because most likely it's dead by that point, right? They said that. Um... She had either her phone had either died or shut off. Right. And I think right. she shut it off. Okay. All right. Well, let's say they've got her somewhere and she gets a second to go to the landline. Mm -hmm. Has that number memorized? Because at that point, to make a long distance phone call, you used a calling card if you had a calling card. True. Um if you were to pay phone, do you remember that? I'm just kidding. Or what if a pay phone would be another place? And there were some left in 2004. Because so I was going to say, if you know she's desperate, she's not going to waste her goddamn time with the five million numbers to punch in. But what if her dad on time, Kim? <laughs> what if whoever's landline she was using? Uh -huh. What if somehow theirs was set up? No, people use. Well, there were phone no, but see, there were landlines back then that a lot of people didn't pay for long distance service. So you couldn't call out unless it was a local number. No. Oh. Trust me, I remember my parents done that to, they used to have what's called children's phone. So you had like two lines. You had the kids had a line, if you're lucky. Yeah, it didn't have long distance. Parents were smart. We really should have never had the phone to begin with, but I, I thought they knew. Like seven when I used to prank people. Do what? When I used to prank people, like my teacher oh, yeah. in middle school, I would do star six seven. Yeah, we didn't have star six seven. No. We didn't even, but there was no caller ID either, and there was no, no way to see who called you. <laughs> we didn't have to star six seven. There was no caller ID and. There was no way of hitting, what was it, the last call to um, whatever the numbers were? I remember that. I forgot. Because you would look at people in this thing called the phone book. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really silly. We've been talking about this on social media stuff, um, trainings. But so you or, look at people. Or the times that you would call, if you were lazy for the phone book, you would call the information information line yeah what was yeah. it 411 i think yeah, it was, it was. 
Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, but you you look at the name um, like Whitehead because I mean those lot of last names Whitehead, and then you call somebody and ask them for Miss Blackhead or something stupid. Oh my god! <laughs> or you call people and you'd be like, uh, "Yeah, your cow's in my garden. I don't have a cow. Yes, you do, and you better come get it out of my garden. It is eating all my turnips. I'm like, god, y'all. My turnips. Hey, this is fun. Yeah. I'm gonna use uh, the ladies' room real quick. Okay, have fun with that. I can't see comments. Let me see if I can. Hold on. Let me go over there. Oh, I can. I just never went there. Sorry, guys. Whimsies, Gypsy. What were whimsies? Is that what they were called? Or whimsy something else? I'm talking about the belts. See, I had I had to be... Yo, it gets so depressing and so dark and in this case, and you get so frustrated. Um... Gotta have fun. You got to. Or or just you can't do it. Leanne's with Leanne. So Kim's putting out uh, Kim's putting out some um and when she comes back I'll have her switch it back over. So um where Herbie Herb's up. <laughs> um there's a group on Facebook. Um what is it? Laura Murray case discussion, um, the safe space. Um, that's our group. There's also an official group over there, but we get more into that. But Kim is doing the videos here on her channel. So she's putting together like the, the quick videos that are kind of telling the story. There's a lot of backstory to all of it. Um, but that's why we're talking about going live and kind of doing bits and pieces on each episode she puts out. And as she does that episode, um, we can kind of talk about the speculations, the questions we have, the things it'll help, it'll kind of help bring you up the speed um, on a lot of it. And you can ask questions in the groups too. And if anybody's ever rude, you just tag myself, Kim, or Dorothy and be like, yo, look, I'm new and the same right. And we'll be like, yeah. And because people are to respect people, period. Or I tell people to suck it up. It depends on how I feel. Yeah, well, it depends on if it's me that you get, Kim or Dorothy. Dorothy, yeah. I'll tell you to go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll be like, well, well, no, I mean, I'll know, we'll notice it. Because, I mean, if you're, what happens in a lot of these cases, and a lot of you are going to know anyway, because you follow different cases, is you get in there and you don't know, you're not up to speed. And so you're trying to understand and you're trying to ask questions and there's people that's been around for years and they're just too damn lazy and think they're too good to go back and explain it to you and be helpful because I mean, my God, what like you know, that would be horrible for somebody to be helpful. Do it. That's like me be, the rag in the tailpipe. No. Now, if you ask about the rag in the tailpipe, and we'll talk about that later. Cause you haven't said anything about that. Have you? No. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Dorothy might boot you out of the group. No, we will No, no, she won't. She's like, oh my God, if I hear about that rag and that tailpipe one more time, it's so funny. Um, Dorothy's a daggum nut. But yeah, so ask, ask questions. Um, well. oh, thanks, Herb. I don't feel like I have an accent. I feel like Gina has an accent. I have a, I have a redneck Hickville accent called Southern, yeah. Southern Yeehaw. Yeah. She would love um, Mandy, but Mandy's not on YouTube right now. She's taking a little break. She's from Texas. All right. Her, Hurry was asking, did you guys have a phone number for the time? We used to call it to set our clocks when we moved in the 90s. No, I, I don't remember that. At the time the time is. I'm trying to think. I don't remember that. And maybe it was a feature or something. And maybe it's something that we all totally had. And look, Facebook come out the week while I went missing. They're official. Yeah, that's a good point to make. The yes, that was, yes, it did. Um, so, I had MySpace and Friendster at the time. Yeah. 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 Yep, yep. I don't think I joined Facebook till like. 2007 or something. I was, I was somewhere in there, and that was the thing. I remember that. Um, I remember thinking then because 
I had long agency then. And I remember thinking that I was on the ball because if I actually listed on my profile back then, the name of my agency, that was what we called Facebook advertising. And now I actually teach people to use it, but for, for business. And so it's, it's like this funny, funny joke. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll let you talk about Tim Carpenter. <laughs> so anybody doesn't know, Tim Carpenter is Mara's sister's ex-husband. Um, and, and go ahead, Kim. There's Jeremy Rath. Bum. There's um, poor Dick, Jeremy. Was Jeremy alone? The stink face. Um, they call him stinky face. Well, that's and Nancy. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> it just brings up a bunch of funny. Sorts. Sorry, those are, these are like inside jokes that we touched on. Huh? So yes, people have looked into Tim Carpenter. Um, even Fred. Um, knows the questions and all the stuff. He he's even went with Jeremy Raffin to check things out. He has not ruled him out. He's not gonna rule him out. He's not gonna rule anybody out until he finds his daughter and he figures out what happened. Yeah, so. there's a lot of things that you can say that could like have him fit like he drove a red truck. You know. Yeah, and the story was where was it? Um it fell west of where she went missing. What is what? Would you ask me where Jeremy had seen the truck that he swears the person that was um, pouring the barrels that smelled like death? Yeah, um, thank you, face him, Carpenter. It was, in, it was in the woods, but it was when, um. I know it's a little mountainous there, which is mountainous everywhere up there, but kind of sort of. Was it near the lake that they searched? It was southwest. I'll have to ask. I can't remember. Um, yeah, I think. I can pull up on that and look at it here in a little bit. I can't remember the exact place. Um, yeah. So, so you don't, <laughs> I'm laughing now. One of the questions that came up, um, it's the trending one on Reddit right now, is could Mara have had a drug problem? Could she have had what? A drug problem. <laughs> well, I reckon we all could have, but no, I don't think she has a drug Who problem. Who doesn't? Yeah, well. <laughs> um, yeah, so when I say that and I'm laughing, yeah, I mean, it's not that. Okay, we don't know what the, the, the police are doing or who they rule in and out and all this hot stuff. So who the heck knows with them? But if you ask that question to some people that's from the case, they'd be like, really? To yeah, me? Like what I just did, I was like, oh, that's that's what it is now. I mean, it's good to like ask those yeah. questions. All it's going to do, even if you're like, oh, well, she smoked weed once. Like as soon as anybody hears anything like drug related, people stop caring. So that's why I get aggravated too, because it's like, unless it could have something to, unless she's like an undercover, like cocaine cowboy drug Lord. Yeah. I think, well, I, I think everybody. One of the, the questions lately, and, and that's what I was talking about like with Tim Carpenter. Yes. There's stories behind that. Actually you can Google it. There's a lot of, I think on Reddit too. Um, just pull up. All you got to do is just go and Google and put in more money, Tim Carpenter. Hmm. And you can kind of catch up on some of that stuff without us going off into left field because I can do that real easy. It's like squirrel. Yeah. Um, so the drug thing is one of the conversations has been they're going back even before like going to the why did she leave? Why did something happen at UMass? And yes, there's phone logs um, like from her calls around campus and things like that days before. One of them was for pizza, like, what, three something in the morning. And, and there were a lot of calls, but I mean, hey, for all I know, she liked pizza. But somebody brought up the fact that um, back in 2004, and with a lot of colleges, and I know this did happen, I mean, from things I've read and stuff like that, um, that it was kind of supposedly like pizza places, some of the drivers would had drugs and deliver drugs to college campuses supposedly that way. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why they're asking. And then there's 
think people saying like, um, could she have been a confidential informant? Because supposedly she got busted um, ordering a pizza off of a stolen credit card number. Doesn't mean she stole it. I think it. Um, if she did do this, then it's probably because it was like the whole floor or dorm was like passing around this credit card number if that were the case. Mm. Or, and I thought about this too, Kim, is how do we know somebody did not give her that, write it down and said, here's my number, go ahead and call and order us a pizza? Yeah. It's It's possible she didn't even know. I mean, she ordered the pizza. Anyway, well, guess what? It was reported stolen. So the police came and they took a shot, but they never said what they'd done. They didn't do anything really, like a mugshot ever, supposedly. And um, so now they're saying, well, because she done that, did they make her get in and be a confidential informant? And it could have been a drug deal gone bad and UMass is trying to cover it up or they're trying to take her away or is she in hiding? Have they put her in hiding? I mean, it's like this whole, that's just another whole rabbit hole. I'm not saying, no, it didn't happen, or these things didn't happen. I'm just saying, ugh. my gosh, by the time we're done, she's going to be in the mob. She's going to be on Mars if we keep going. Like, yep, yep. The alien, oh, the alien things already come up too. She like that. There has to be like a level of like you. It's totally fine to speculate and do this, that, and the other thing. Because mm-hmm. if you don't, then like you'll you, never find anything. But. Right. But you have to be. Don't like, always cool. advertise it out to the public in the world with a bunch of people who are like, these like, <laughs> yeah. Because guess what? Oh god, you're just gonna get in an argument with some of these people. But her sister, she flipped over. I know. Hey, somebody brought up a really good point about that the other day. What is about that? the sister? Um, about the phone call. My oh, sister. my sister phone. And call. they were asking about her being in a sorority and how they called her. They call them sisters. But they're saying, you know, that there was a lot to sorority. Um, I don't know. I was never in a sorority. You guys may know. But anyway. That were in one, and it is kind of, you know. Like a big cool. deal. Ever. It would be well known that she was in a sorority if she was in a sorority. Oh, right? yeah, for sure. Because so. and she, would, she wouldn't have time to be in one, honestly, because she was running track. And she was in the nursing program, which was very yeah. high demand. Mm-hmm. And. Yeah. Well, and I think with Kathleen, Kathleen has said that um, Kathleen, Kathleen had her, her sister Kathleen had a some really funky stuff happen to her in her life, um, and I think it really messed with her. And she found an escape in alcohol, and Tim. I think they were married at the time. Then, well, yeah, they were married at the time. Duh. Um, anyway. Tim was like an enabler. He was an enabler. And she had went to um, a rehab, an alcohol rehab, I think, and come out. And I think that Kathleen and Tim maybe had gotten into it or whatever. But she was saying that what in her conversation, but I don't even know that it was her she was talking to at that time. Um, Because the reported time of her getting so upset was so much later than the time that the call shows on the call log to Kathleen, right, Kim? Yeah. So, I think, yeah, I think she had she fell off the wagon, and I think she told Mara, and I think Mara was really upset over that. But I, who knows? I don't know. And then I always think, what if that was the time that Julie called Mara? I, I don't know. I'm just I'm making these things up, okay? <laughs> what if? Because look, I don't think Billy had anything to do with Mara's disappearance, but I think he could have been kind of a dirty dog, like a lot of males at that age and I know that supposedly at one time Joy had told Mara that um, a friend at, from West Point that they had she found out that he had cheated on Mara with this friend it almost makes you wonder could it have been around that time is that when she told him because I don't know I don't know Right. Like my sister, my, like my sister told me this or something. I don't know. Who knows? Right. Yeah, I think it was around Warren. Where was it though, in Warren? Um, 
I'm going to look at it. Tarleton? Yes, Tarleton. Lake Tarleton. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That's no, what it's searched. They searched that? that more than once. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. I think they went back up there recently. two years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, recently as in yeah, 15 yeah. years. So anything in the past five is kind of recent. Yeah. Kind of. And to be quite honest with you, and I mean, I'm really going to start going off the thing. I'm not going to talk about it. I'll wait until we get there. What I don't want to jump ahead. Back to Patrick Vassy? No. No. No, I, I'm thinking about where I want them to go right now, what I want them to be doing. Oh, me too. They need to get back in that house. Yeah. Somehow. Yep. Yep. But, um, but anyway, we'll talk about this later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, are y'all good? Got everything? I think so. Can I go to bed now? Yeah, we've been on for an hour. That flew by. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. We gotta, I told you I can talk forever. So, yeah. We're missing our Dorothy. Dorothy. We're missing Dorothy. Dorothy. She's big sis. I call her my Huckleberry. <laughs> She's from New York. So we'll have a New Yorker. Oh, yeah. She's like the big sis. And yeah, she loves it when I call her my Huckleberry. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Did everybody get what they want? Um, or get what they want? Questions answered. I'm exhausted. So, guys, I know I've been a little eh. I'm going to get more eh. Yeah, we'll try to do this like at least once a week. Yeah. Right, Gina? Right. <laughs> and then my other five thousand no. live videos. Um yeah, yeah. We need to do this. And what I want to do is, is kind of work on this and like have fun just talking and goofing and talking to you guys. And hopefully eventually we'll start um hold on, I'll let Kim answer that because she only her brain knows where she's going on the next video. Um hopefully we can um start repurposing them too. So we could literally start taking and pulling out some, transcribe some of it if Kim decides she wants to start a blog post. Or we can take and split audio from video and throw it into a podcast that you want to edit out some of my crap, like right. my goofiness, unless you just want it to be authentic. Because I'm very authentic. Anyway, I think it would be cool. I don't like being too stale and too. Oh, edited. I don't want to be stale. Um, I mean, heck, I've already drew boobies on the car for y'all tonight. Come on, <laughs> not stale. Oh, thanks, Gypsy. Um, so what are you discussing next time? So I can yeah. touch on it. So I'm working. I should be putting it out. Actually, thanks to this little session here. Um, part five which is the first 36 hours following, you know, when her car was discovered. Um, and then after that, it's to be continued to part six, which I think I am going to do the little rewind back to, I don't know. Now I'm thinking. There's so many moving parts in this case, guys, but there's so much going on at the same time. But if you, I haven't covered anything really. I've just been hitting it's like, like points. It's like you drew, if you tried to do a content map, okay, imagine like having three days with 5,000 incidents or, or, or topics coming off of it. And it's hard. I know I'm glad she's doing that part because like my brain, she can stay a little more focused on it. Yeah, a little too focused, and that's why it takes me so long because the videos are literally like what less than ten minutes, and I'm like, mm. <laughs> wait, what about doing really well not to puke information in those things because that's my problem. Well, do you know what it is? It's like when I was doing that, I'm like, I can't put this part in like witness A, like that could be like a twenty minute video because there's just so much to it, and it changes so much. Yeah. And I have to yeah. I'm trying to make it be like, say, someone that only heard about the case a little bit. And a lot of people that I talk to say they hate the Maura Murray case because 
it's just so overwhelming. There's too much information. And then like, there's uh -huh. layers and it's like, I just, I can't even like follow it. So I'm trying to just do like the main bullet points. So yeah, cause we can kind of see how we learned what we know now. Yeah, and it's been over a long period of time. But a lot of that we've been there for a lot of the new information coming out, you two gypsies. That's what I was getting to say. And thank you, Desiree. Whoop, whoop. You guys are awesome. So I think I think it's awesome the way she's doing it too, because the way things are right now is there's so much content overload and um this is giving people whose attention spans are just not that just they want information that right. quick. It's perfect. Yeah, it's well, it's perfect because you don't want to sit through. You don't have time to sit through a long video or thousands of hours of podcast. For those people who don't wish to receive their information that way, these videos are perfect because they're they're putting together. They're putting a face with more a, a face with the people, and it's giving you just like the basic facts now. Yeah. If you really want to get deep, then we're going to kind of go here and get deep. She's going to go a little deep, but then we can really start talking about the backside of speculations and, and you it know, mean a brainstorm for like what to put into the next one, right? To leave out. Like what you like, what you don't like. How deep <clears throat> do you want to go? Do you want to take just one small aspect and like dig deep? Um, there's a lot of things out there. I mean, heck, it, there's a lot of things that will be hard to really, like, say things that we know, like, we've researched just because I think it's, I, I don't know how we'll handle it when we get there. We'll figure it out, Kim. That way you guys have some of the information without us putting out innocent people's names who might be really upset that haven't been named before. Yeah. So, there's ways of doing that without putting the names out there and but giving you the information enough that you can go figure out how to go check it out and research it yourself. So. Yep. Okay. Alrighty. Look All right. more into Tim Carpenter. Yeah. Um, actually, it'd be pretty cool. Hey, I bet we could get Jeremy to come on. Oh, Wrath Bomb. Yes. Yeah. We'll talk about Rath that. Buns. Call them wrath buns, like cinnamon buns. Call them cinnamon buns, yeah. You'll wrap them cinnamon buns. Jeremy is, so if you guys ever hear of Jeremy, Jeremy is, um, I met him last year. Um, he is a super cool guy. He is very, he's just a good old country boy. Very intelligent. I mean, like, really intelligent. I mean, as far as, you know, and when you meet people out and, I think he had overalls on. So go meet a country boy in overalls, and then when you start talking to him, you start realizing the guy don't smart. I mean, he's he's intelligent, he's smart. Um, I mean, very intelligent. Yeah, and you said that he was very nice and he was very helpful. Very nice, um, very helpful. He um, he's been put through the ringer by um, police department. Um. Things he has come out and said, like um, giving him an ultimative, you've got to be here and give us this by this time, the statement that, just different things. I mean, and then he's been ridiculed in the public or the community, well, in public, the community um, by a lot of people, but these people haven't met him, and that's what's sad. They haven't met him. Um, he's really nice because I give people the benefit of the doubt and I talk to him. Wait till Rena hears about this. I'm not be right. use the name that I call him. Oh, yeah, he'll be right. too hot for TV. So. Yeah, he's just sort too, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, anyway, he's pretty cool. I don't know, we'll see. What are you doing? Caffeine? Kirby. Got my Starbucks coffee I'm still swigging on. All right, well, I'll let you go because I'm about to be up for another couple hours to get the rest of the videos out. You have fun with that. I'm so glad that you can do that. I only need three hours of sleep, so I'll be fine. You know, it's funny. I used to think the older I got, the less sleep I'd need. You know, you go through that state. People do. 
<laughs> Some people I know do. I thought that's how it was. Eh. Nope. 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 All right. Well, this worked out really good. It did. It did. Nice to meet you guys. And thank you, thank you. Came. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Gina. You're welcome. Good night. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.